Well, it's a day of reflection, isn't it? It's an unusual day. I mean, we've had so many holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. Anybody had a birthday in 2017? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. I thought so. Yeah, so many days, but this is an unusual day. It's a day of reflection, a day when we think about the past and we think about the future in a different way than maybe any other time of the year. So I'm excited to be here this morning because this is a special day. And I hope as uh, I share with you this morning that you'll get the sense that this is certainly a day when, when God can work in our lives to help us to be able to overcome 2017 and to be ready for 2018. Paul, the Apostle Paul, uh, was on a day of reflection kind of like this day. And in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13, Paul wrote these words. He said, forgetting those things which are behind and looking forward to those things that are ahead, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God. We're going to think about those things this morning, forgetting and pressing forward. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to be here this morning in your house, to end this year on a high note, to end this year with encouragement and hope and all the things that you would uh, place in our hearts. Thank you for Jesus Christ who did it all that we might stand here today and be free from our sins and have hope for the future. God bless us this day, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, if you have the listening guide, there's uh, two or three blanks in that listening guide. And, and uh, the first one is that today is the best day. Today is that most important day of the year. It's a day of reflection. The psalmist said, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. You know, a good friend of mine who's a pastor said, I am done with 2017. I want it to be over. Maybe you had one of those years where you just want it to be over. But today we stand at a place where God wants us to know that there's victory over the past, no matter what it is that's happened in our lives in 2017, maybe all the way back to 1997, maybe all the way back to 1950 or wherever it was that you had that moment in your life where you realized that uh, you'd done the wrong thing or, or there was a failure in your life that has haunted you all of this time. Paul said, I'm forgetting those things, but how do we forget those things? How do we have victory over the past? It's by trusting in Jesus Christ, by leaving all of those things at the cross. The song said it this morning better than I could. You know, I've met some people in the last few weeks. In fact, a man came to our church just on Thursday, and he was overwhelmed by his past. He was overwhelmed by what people were saying to him about who he was, and he was just ready to give up. God doesn't want us to give up, does he? God doesn't want us to be defeated by our past. He wants us to understand there's victory uh, over our past and there's hope for the future because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Satan knows the possibilities of today. It's such an important day in our lives. It's, it's a day when we can have victory over all the things that, that trouble us and all the things that would defeat us. And Satan knows about those possibilities. And so the past of our life is history. But Satan wants to make it current events. And you know this hard thing about this whole past thing is that Satan uses people, friends, family. Do you ever say to somebody, you always do that? Have you ever heard anybody say something that reminded you of a time in your life when you'd like to forget? Satan knows about the possibilities for today. He knows how God can use you to be victorious. But Satan sets a trap. Now, it's okay to think about the past because the past has a lot of important things. I graduated from high school in the past. I got married in the past. I got saved in the past. And it's okay to visit those times, but we can't live there. That's where the trap is. Satan wants to take us back there. He wants to take us not to the good times, but to the bad times, to those times that we have so failed ourselves and God and maybe our family. 
Maybe there's some great hurt in our lives that has happened in the past that we can't get over because we've never left it with Jesus. Satan wants to trap us there. But God wants us to know that today is a new day, that God is our God, our Father, is a God of new beginnings, fresh starts. My goodness. Did you see Moses? What was he going to do? God had a plan and a purpose for Moses, and yet Moses stepped off the edge and decided to do it on his own. And what happened is God had to set him on the shelf. God had to put him aside for a time because he couldn't get past what he had done. But when you see Moses at the burning bush, you understand that a murderer was given a second chance. Moses learned that day that God was a God of new beginnings and second chances, fresh starts. So Moses rose up to be the leader of the nation of Israel. When you see Joseph, you see a man who, when he was sold into slavery, was a little bit of an arrogant, maybe privileged child when you read about his story and about how he responded to his brothers. But when he was sold into slavery, that pampered boy became a man of God. When you see Peter as he meets Jesus after the resurrection, you see a man who was totally broken. I can't imagine anything more uh, devastating than to know that you had betrayed the very Son of God. And Peter was hugely affected by his decision to deny the Lord. He was so overwhelmed that he almost was incapacitated. And yet, after the resurrection, Jesus came to him. This man who was broken in his spirit because of his failures. And Jesus said, do you love me, Peter? Do you want to love me? Do you want to be different? Do you want to change? And at that invitation, Peter became, moved from being a failure to the leader that God had always intended him to be. You see, today is important because it's, it's the day that God has set for us to have a new beginning, a new start. We need that. We need to, we need to realize that God has provided all of that for us. The good news is that you've not exhausted God's patience. You know, I love the fact that my heavenly father loves me in spite of my failures. My earthly father, did not so much. My earthly father was a little bit of a perfectionist. Maybe you don't know anyone like that, but my father could do anything, uh, was a war hero, did all kinds of things perfectly. His son, not so much. And my father let me know at times that he was not really pleased with me. And in fact, at one point in my life, he said, you know, I'm done with you. But oh, God's never said that to me. Amen. There have been times when I haven't done what certainly pleased my heavenly father. I've done things that <clears throat> discouraged him, I'm sure. And he had to put that lump of clay back on the wheel and work with it a little bit more and to get it to where it needed to be. But my heavenly father's patience never ran out. He never got overwhelmed with what was going to happen in my life. And he was there. His well of love and grace was ne never run dry. You see, your, your sins and fears are not greater than God's unconditional love. And we need to get a hold of that. And you say, well, Frank, I know that. Do you? Uh, when, when Satan takes you back to the past, when Satan reminds you of those times when you failed, and when Satan lets you put yourself up beside someone else that maybe is, you, you think is better than you do, you, do you find yourself struggling, thinking, how can God use me? How could, how could God ever bless me in 2018? Over a hundred times in the, in the Psalms, David said and talked about God's unconditional, unfailing love. I want you to know this morning that just like the prodigal son, we don't have to hope we can be forgiven. We don't have to do anything to be forgiven. God's already forgiven us. We just have to accept that gift. We just have to come to the cross. We just have to 
bow the knee, as the song said. Thank you, Pastor David, for that song this morning. We don't have to do anything. We can't correct the past. Anybody got a time machine that you can go back and undo the past? But we can't do that, can we? We, we can't change what happened. But like the prodigal son who took his father's blessings and went and squandered them on himself, it was all about him, wasn't it? But the moment he realized that there was grace, that there was love, that there was opportunity to restore himself, he ran home. And on the way, his father ran to meet him because forgiveness was already there for him. Forgiveness was already accomplished. Forgiveness was already, uh, the sins were already paid for. We need to step towards God and he'll do the rest. We need to reach out and God will take hold. You know, Jesus was praying for you in all of 2017. He's going to be praying for you through all of 2018 and for the rest of your life. God cares about you so much that he is rooting for you. He's in your corner. He knows what's coming in 2018, and he's praying that you'll be strong, that you'll trust him for those moments that are coming, those hard moments. I don't know what it's going to be. You don't know what it's going to be. But God said, I'm here for you. John chapter 17, read it sometime. Uh, I'm telling you the truth. Jesus said, Father, I'm praying for these. And not only for these only, but for all of those that you will give me in the future. I'm praying for them. The psalmist was so confident in this idea that he said, I know, I know that God is thinking about me. Right now, God is thinking about me. Why? Because I'm his child. I'm his child. Because you're his child if you've trusted him. And if you haven't, you should. Because 2018 is going to be more difficult than it needs to be if you don't have Jesus with you. But he cares about you. He's your advocate. He's your strength. He's your big brother. He's your go-to guy. The Bible says, the psalmist said, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Satan wants to shake your life. Satan wants to sift you as he did Peter. He wants to take your faith away. He wants to keep you in a place where you're not receiving the blessings of God, where you're not enjoying your relationship with God. But I want to encourage you today that life is going to be challenging, but there is hope in Jesus. You know, when you look at the, the story of the disciples, uh, they certainly uh, were a band of uh, merry men. They were a band of of uh, men who had some challenges in their life and, and uh, they struggled with so many things. But as we watch them, as we understand them, we understand that we're like them. And Jesus wants us to learn from those lessons. See, Jesus is praying for you and you say, well, if he's praying for me in 2017, why was it so rough? Remember the story of the disciples in the boat and the storm? Jesus was in the boat and Jesus is in our boat. He's in our life. But there was a storm. And the point of the story is that if Jesus is in our life, it doesn't mean there's not going to be storms. What it means is that Jesus is there to be with us, to comfort us, to guide us, to give us hope and give us a future. We have great encouragement when we know that we can have victory over the past and we can have hope for the future. You see, God said, I have plans for you. And we need, to, we need to embrace those plans. In fact, Jeremiah chapter 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you hope and a future. We need to look at 2018. We need to look at today and realize that going forward, we need to live 
in his plan, in, for his purpose, and for his glory. So much of the time we, we live for ourselves, don't we? And the future is not going to be bright just because we have a big 401k. The future is not going to be bright because our home is paid for and our car is paid for. And all of these things that God uh, has provided for us so graciously are taken care of. And now we can just coast. No, 2018 is going to be marvelous. It's going to be amazing because we set our compass to live his purpose and his plan. We have to be careful because Satan has a plan too. Satan has a plan for your life. That's to discourage you. Why is it that these folks up here, the choir that we had, the orchestra that we sometimes go to hear, why is it that that is such a beautiful sound? Because everybody's playing their part. Everybody has a part. And they're playing their part and doing what they ought to to be a part of the, the, the total picture. You see, God has a plan for us for 2018. All of you, uh, this church is going to grow and prosper and have an impact on this community because you're doing your part. I had a part in building this building. I was kind of the manager over all of the moving parts and all the volunteers and all the amazing things that God did here. And it was amazing and I didn't have much to do with it except just be here. But uh, God has another plan now. The building is done. Now we need to step up and be a part of the future of this church to be teachers and leaders and, and encouragers in all the different areas that, that this church ministers to in the community. See, there was a time when a young lady named Esther came in her life and she didn't quite understand what God was doing with her. She was a Jewish young lady, very beautiful obviously, because the king decided that he wanted her to be his wife, and so they began preparing her uh, to be his wife. Now, this Jewish young lady being prepared to be the wife of a heathen, a Gentile. What, how, how God, what, what's going on here? What do you want me to do? Why are you doing this to me? What is my part in all of this? Well, she had a relative who was uh, a wise man, and, and he said to Esther this. He said, Esther, you've come for such a time as this. She didn't understand at the time that God was going to use her to de deliver and, and protect her people. Uh, I don't know what your part is in the advancement of the kingdom of God here in this place, but God has a plan for all of us. Maybe it's using your business in a way that glorifies him. Maybe it's uh, you being a witness to somebody who no, none of us could ever talk with. See, Mary played her part. Mary gave birth to Jesus, but she was willing to play her part. She didn't understand it all. She didn't know quite what was going to happen, but she played her part. And by the way, Joseph played his part too. You know, the Christmas story is not all about Mary. Joseph had to do something, didn't he? He had to accept his part. Now, it wasn't what he envisioned, certainly, to be you, know, you see the pictures, what's he doing? He's leading the donkey, right? It might be that God wants us to do something very insignificant. But if we embrace that part wholly and completely, God will bless our lives. We need to know that 2018 is not going to be about us. It shouldn't be about us. Although we think it is about us, right? I mean, we've been told all our lives it's about us. I have a shirt that says, my mother thinks I'm special. You know, everybody tells us it's all about us, right? You're so sweet, you're so cute, you're so lovely, you're so smart. All of those things. But it's not about us. It's about Him. He wants His plan to be worked out in our lives for His glory, for His kingdom purpose. And if we fall into that place that God wants us to fill in this place, in our community, in our family, then God can bless us in such a way that the hope for the future will be so bright and so clear. We can have victory over the past if we leave it at the cross, if we trust in Jesus Christ who paid the price 
for all of our sins. We don't have to live in that place like the prodigal son who wasted so much of his life uh, trying to find happiness because happiness was at home. Happiness was with the Father. Happiness was uh, fulfilling the plan of God. God has a gift for us. God has a gift for us. Now, we often think about that. In fact, it's told uh, by some that uh, this gift that God has for us is uh, material wealth. You can listen to some who would take you to the Word of God and say, if you're in God's will, you're going to have a new job, a new car, a new house, a Miss America for a wife, and all those kinds of things. You know, that's a symbol of God's blessing on your life, that you're where you ought to be. We just recently opened a bunch of presents at our house, and it takes a long time because I make everybody open their presents one at a time. And uh, we enjoy it, but it's a little tedious when the kids were littler. I'd like to close with a story about a gift. There was a really poor family, didn't have money for presents for Christmas. You know, it's hard to imagine that just a, just a, a few years ago, in my father's lifetime, during the Great Depression, my father said uh, if they got an apple or an orange in their sock on Christmas morning, that was Christmas. But this poor family had so little money that the father couldn't buy presents for the children and he wanted to buy a present for his wife. He wanted it to be special so he bought some very expensive wrapping paper. He was anticipating being able to wrap that present and present it to his wife but one day he noticed that the paper was gone and he found his 10-year-old daughter had used it to wrap up her own box. Well, he was very, very angry, but there was not much he could do. The paper had been used and the box was prepared. And on Christmas morning, he thought, this better be something really special because she's used that expensive paper and this is all I could afford. Well, she handed the box to her dad and he thought, boy, I'm really, this has got to be special. He opened the box, and inside was nothing. There was no present inside. Then he became very angry with his daughter, and he looked at her, and he said, What in the world did you do? And she said, Well, Daddy, we didn't have any money, but I blew kisses into this box until it was full. And I wanted to give it to you to show you how much I love you. You see, this box that God, this present that God has prepared for us is not filled with presents. It's not filled with material things. God's given us unconditional love. He's given us his patience, his kindness. He's given us eternal life. And you can't put a price on that, can you? As we conclude this morning, I'd like to ask you the question, do you have victory over the past? Do you have victory over your past? Or are you struggling with some of those things that happened? Maybe they weren't even your fault. But you feel guilty about them. You feel overwhelmed by them because they continue to be in your life. They continue to be in your memory. God said, leave them at the cross. Leave them at the cross. Do you feel a little afraid about the future? I visited with a family uh, just last night. Their mother is about to pass away. And in that moment of struggling and not knowing what to do, there is a fear, isn't there? A little bit of angst and not knowing. But I, I go to the scene of the, the thief on the cross when Jesus said, Today, you'll be with me in paradise. There's the hope. Not our hope. Not our doing, but God's hope for the future. If you need that victory over the past, you need that hope for the future, 
you can find Jesus today and make this a special day. We're going to have some folks over at the prayer wall in just a moment. Pastor David's going to come and lead us in a song. I'd like to encourage you to renew that relationship with Jesus Christ, to make that relationship uh, this day, the last day of the year, make this a special day in your life. Let's stand together.